Well, we just did Mission 1 for Akiko at 0 o'clock, and already Mission 2 is available. And we're go- Actually, this, is, um, this Mission 2 is going to show us that in Siren 2, the second mission can change pretty substantially from the first. In Siren 1, Mission 1 and Mission 2, pretty much the same level, except you had to do different things. In Mission 2, there can be some pretty substantial differences, and we will see that now. Well, this intro cutscene will be the same. This would not change. We're going to wake up wondering what's going on. Don't look! I don't know what she, who she's talking to about not looking, though. What? Where am I? What happened? That is a good question. What happened to the tsunami? What's going on? We were hit by a giant red tsunami, but I'm completely dry and alive. Ugh. That seems strange. Don't eat the laxative fruit, Soji. The hallucinogenic and laxative fruit. You're gonna... You're gonna regret it later if you do. What was that? It's not usually like that. Alright. So we have to reach a different road. But now something's gonna change here. We have to look for memories of the past. Inspect carefully all high areas to find a necessary tool. Okay, Soji has left the level. So the first mission, we found Soji, and then we escaped the level with him. He's gone. He just walked out. So he's not even in this mission. It's very different now. But, I mean, we, have, we are also going to be introduced to Akiko's power, the power of flashback. When entering a particular spot, there's a brief on-screen change. Upon seeing the change, we should, we should sight jack. We might be able to see the remnants of a past memory. As we search various areas, try to find the old memories. So, okay. Acquire a key using flashback. So do you see the screen just kind of flashed? Let's see if we can get that again. There we go. That means I should sight jack here. I'm looking for something that looks different. Something that doesn't look like the others. Oh, oh, oh wait, that one. This takes place in the past? We can tell because it's sepia toned. So it's a child playing with a robot. <laughs> and they're in a sandbox. And you might notice on the edge of the sandbox, there's a, a key. It's kind of hard to notice, but there is a key on the edge of that sandbox. You see it to the left? Maybe we should try to find that sandbox. We found it. It's the sandbox. This is where the child was playing. Unfortunately, there is no key. There was, at some point in the past. Not now. We could look around. But we would not find a key. All we saw is that there was a child playing with a robot. And that there was a key. Did I get a prompt? What was that prompt? Up. Oh yeah, I can just stand on this. There's no reason to. We can do it. Alright, why don't we just look around for some more memories? We can drive, of course. We are not getting tutorial prompts this time, though. Let's turn our headlights on. Kill them. Now, even though Soji's not here, uh, I'm gonna do this so we can get the umbrella. Just in case I need a weapon. I might not, but, uh, you know, just in case. Hey. 
Hey! Look at this guy. Smacking me around before I can pick this umbrella up. Alright, think it's gone now. So it says we just have to look around the level and try to find flashbacks. Oh, did we just get one actually? Hold on. Let me get out of the car. Well, I, I didn't mean to put it by the veranda, but that's fine. Hold on, I think the screen flashed when we were around, like, here. Oh, it's probably just talking about the... the playground. It's the same area we just saw. Alright. Let's run over some Shibito. And let's try to find some visions. So this is Akiko's normal psychic power. She was surprised by the sight jacking, because normally she can't do that. But this is what she can normally do. I don't mean run over people with a car. Let me switch the weapon and pick up his trowel, because that's a bit of a better weapon. Now, he'll have no weapon when he gets up. That means that if he wants to attack us, he can just grab at us. It's not very powerful, though. But it's, it's good for us that he doesn't have a weapon. And good for us that we have a stronger weapon. Unfortunately, I can't get by that little gate over there. Let's have a look at that gate. So I can't drive past this, but I can inspect it traffic barrier. We might be able to remove it with a key. So, it's possible that we could remove this if we wanted to drive down there. Right, he has a bladed weapon. I'm gonna switch weapon to my umbrella. And now when I pick this up, I'm going to drop my umbrella and pick up his rope cutter. He'll now have the umbrella when he gets up, but it's a weak weapon. Let's take a look, take a look at these weapons we got. Rope cutter, tool used in packaging, loading, and transportation work. It has a short blade at the end of a handle for cutting rope. And the trowel is used to apply and spread mortar or plaster to walls. So I can hold these two weapons, switch between them. Yeah, see, now he can grab me, but it's not very powerful. Let's look through this building. Seems to be locked from the inside. Well, we were in there. I didn't get any flashes. I'm not sure if there are any psychic flashes in this building. Let's see if we find any. Oh, there's one. Hold on. Let's close this door. All right, psychic flash. Let's look for the flashback. Alright, so at some point in the past, someone was looking at a piece of paper, a notice that someone put up on this bulletin board with a key on it. And I cannot read this, but we could assume that someone lost their key. And they're asking, have you seen this key? I lost it. Where could the key be? I don't think we can go into these doors. Let me just make check around and make sure. So the last person to see this key, as far as we know, was that child who was playing with the robot. And 
this window's broken, but we still cannot go out into the roof. Before we walk out, I'm just gonna, like, stay here for a second, just to get our stamina back. Because we, re we, we might remember that we already saw in a previous mission that you can get tired if you're running for a while, and you'll get slow, and it's annoying. We're going to go into this other building, and hopefully we don't get shot by the sniper. Actually, maybe I do want to pull the sniper. I could use the car and then the horn like we did before to pull the sniper out a little bit, so hopefully he won't get us. Let's just try that. So, oh, down here. Honk the horn. Sniper hears us. And here he comes. Just to get him out of the way a little bit. Let's take a look at this building. We got a flashback. Let's close this door. And let's see what was in here. Alright, at some point in the past, someone put up uh, a message on this bulletin board, I guess, saying that they lost their toy robot. And if you have their toy robot, please go to room 203. That is where the toy robot should be. Don't know. I don't think there's anything in this room. Hmm. There's a sheepy toe somewhere around. Can we see? Where's the sheepy toe? Maybe it's talking about one that's walking outside the building. Is there anyone in this building we need to worry about? I'm not seeing anyone, so... Let's walk through- let's explore the building. Hopefully there's no one here. Here's room 201. Let's look- let's look at our map. So room 203, it's actually on the other side of the building that we're in. Most of these doors are locked, so we can't get there from here. But maybe there's something else we can do. See, this door's locked from the inside. But look, uh-oh, up here, hey, that window is open. It's small, but Akiko is also small. Well, of course we're going to enter using window. <laughs> All right, we're in the bathroom. Let's see what we can find in here. Well, first we can unlock this. Click, there we go. Something that we find in here, the reason to come into this room, is a camera. And that unlocks mission two for one of Soji's missions later on. Let's take a look at this camera we just picked up. 
It's a compact camera dropped in room A301, equipped with a self-timer and flash. I don't think there's anything else in here. Someone coming? No, someone is coming. Hello. Look what he's got. He's got like an axe. Like a hatchet. Now let me uh, switch weapons to my trowel so I'll replace it with... A broad axe. Now look at this thing. Broad axe. A type of axe with a broad blade used for cutting and chipping wood. So yeah, we're upgrading our weapons. We're doing a lot better than we were at the start of the level. Let's get to the other door closer down here. Hopefully the sniper is not aware. Yep, sniper. Oh, there's a sniper. Sniper is not moving, though. He saw us for a second, but he's not going to come this way. All right, so we saw in the flashback there was a poster that said that I think the robot needed to go to room 203. So let's head there. This is room 204. This room is pretty busted up. Now we can walk out on the veranda. And that lets us get to room 203. I guess the front door must have been locked. We solve the mystery. Robo Zoo has been added to archive. We picked up the traffic barrier key. Okay, so this was the entire what the entire pathway of using those flashbacks was meant to get to was meant to find this. A key hidden inside the Robo toy. It can be used to unlock the traffic barrier. But it also said we needed to find the wire. Let's see. Yeah, it just says acquire the wire. So where is the wire? Well, let's let's do some sight jacking. I think maybe we can see it if we sight. Okay, yeah. So there's someone walking around on the roof of one of the buildings. Let's just take a look at this guy. We remember in Siren 1... The solution of some of some puzzles was to just sight jack some shibito until you might see what you're looking for. And oh, what's what is he walking towards right now? Something to his left. Well, there's an open door right there. So, well, we didn't see it very well, but there was like a, a wire hanging from the from the. Uh, the barricade. So we want to get up to this roof. Well, is the roof to this building? I'm actually not sure if it's this building or the other one. We'll, we'll find out shortly, though. We'll just go up here and see if the door's open. Yeah, it is. So 
I think he's going to look directly at this door when he comes over here. Yeah, see, there it is, the wire. It's on the barricade. You might, it might be difficult to tell what that is, but that's the wire we're looking for. We're, we're right over there. All right, we could just sneak it and get the wire, but hey, we've got a big weapon. Check out this weapon. It ha it's so long. All right, over here is the wire. We got the wire. Up there in the background is an ominous tower going to a red light in the sky. We'll see that. We can, like, see that in a bunch of the levels. Nothing to say about that at the moment. It's just there. It's just there. Don't worry about- don't worry about the- oh, hold on, there's someone right here. Don't worry about the ominous tower. Going up to a red light in the sky. All right, so I got... Oh, we should look at the wire in our inventory. What does it say? Metal wire rope left on the building a rooftop. It can be connected to a car. Why would we want to connect that to our car, though? Well, what we can do, what we know we, what we can do, is we can use that key we picked up to remove this barricade. That's the yeah, remove barrier. All right. Where did I leave that car? There it is. Eh, might as well hit him while we're here. Not many levels you can do that with. In, I should say. So it's, it's fun to take the opportunity. Alright, now we can drive here. Ooh, we can connect the wire to this barricaded door. Which we will do now. The wire is tied. Let's get back in. Pull wire with car. Mission accomplished. We got out through the locked door. Moving on to the next item. Uh, this afternoon, a woman's body was found in an apartment in Shinjuku. The body appears to be that of Ryoko Tegewa, who worked at a local restaurant. We have a reporter on the scene. Yes, a woman was found dead in the Ryoko, why? Having been beaten to death with a blunt object. <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Don't make a sound, I'll kill you! Just shut up and listen, all right? I didn't do it, all right? I, I, I saw her. I, I passed her on the stairs on my way up to the apartment. And when I stepped into the room, th 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 there was a dead woman in there. Uh, the cops are saying it's real cool. I don't know how to explain it, but it wasn't me. Come on, please, help me. I didn't do it. All right. I believe you. Oh. <gasps> You might notice that Soji is not the brightest. If you want someone to believe that you didn't kill someone, probably b busting into their place, kicking a table over and holding them at knife point is not the way to do it. But hey, it worked. Let's uh, take a look at the description of 
this. So this took place at negative 29. It's way early in the timeline, obviously before they went to the island. Intruder. Akiko is shocked by the news that Ryuko has been murdered. The suspect, Soji, suddenly confronts her and professes his innocence. So we've heard the name Ryuko before. Um, so now we're hearing that Ryuko is a friend of theirs who has been murdered and Soji is the prime suspect. He's saying he didn't do it, but Soji is wanted. And what does, what does this have to do with them going to Yamajima? We don't really know yet. Okay, archive items. News paradox. We got this because we listened to the news. News paradox. The news program that separates fact from fiction. Shinjuku District, Tokyo. Woman found dead of unnatural causes in apartment room. Let's play the video data. Moving on to the next item. This afternoon, a woman's body was found in an apartment in Shinjuku. The body appears to be that of Ryoko Tegewa, who worked at a local restaurant. We have a reporter on the scene. Yes, a woman was found dead in her apartment here behind me, having been beaten to death with a blunt object. Police are treating this case as homicide and have issued a warrant for Mr. Soji Abe, now the prime suspect in this murder case. Neighbors have said that the woman and Mr. Abe were known to have argued often. In fact, they were heard quarreling on the night before the murder. The suspect is probably still at large in the area, and the police are searching for him as we speak. Moving on to local... I want to know what that next story was going to be. Well, we're ne we'll never know. So, Soji and Ryuko knew each other and apparently argue were arguing... People heard them arguing shortly before uh, she was killed. But Soji says that he didn't do it. All right, number four, the National Times. Uh, the requirement for this archive item is to subscribe to the National Times. I guess Akiko was a subscriber. National Times, August 1, 2005, Evening Edition. Women, women beaten to death. Roommates sought for questioning. So Soji was Ryuko's roommate. Around 4 p.m., the body of a beaten woman was found in an apartment in Tokyo's Shinjuku district. An employee of a local restaurant, the woman was identified as 18-year-old Ryuko Tagawa. The body was found by Tagawa's employer, who went to her apartment room when Tagawa failed to return during working hours. The restaurant owner called the local authorities when he discovered a suspicious man in the apartment where Tagawa was lying face down in a pool of blood, her head badly beaten. A warrant was issued for the murder suspect, Soje Abe, 24, an unemployed man who refused to accompany the police to, for questioning and escaped from the scene of the crime. Further investigation revealed that Abe had been residing with the victim for about a year in the same apartment room where Tagawa met with her untimely death. Neighbors also reported that the two were heard arguing on the previous night of the incident. So Soji was living with Ryuko for a year. He, does, he, he ran away when the police wanted to question him. Also, that, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I would be kind of annoyed if my boss came to my home if I had, if I had failed to report to work. I mean, come on, boss. Just a uh, little space, please. A little space. Also, something I realized that I was wrong about. I said the game took place in 2006. It takes place in 2005. The game came out in 2006. But, as it says, the newspaper here, when Ryuko was killed, was August 1st, 2005. That also ties into... Let's see. What did I want to... What was I thinking about? Akiko's driver's license. She got her driver's license July 30, 2005. So she got her driver's license like two days earlier, which is why she doesn't know anything about cars. So she's not very con she's not a very confident driver. Also, she was born August 3rd, 1976. I believe 1976 was the year of the um of the Yamajima disaster when everyone vanished. Coincidence? And uh, we also have RoboZoo because we inspected the closet. 
Let's see. Sushiban Toy Company's RoboZoo line followed in the wake of the unsuccessful launch of its Robo Beast toy, a product that placed Sushiban on the brink of bankruptcy. In a desperate effort to revive the company's failing business, Sushiban set its sights on the ever-growing popularity of panda bears among kids. Keeping production costs at a minimum, Sushiban re-equipped the Robo Beast with a new panda head and programmed the voice synthesis gimmick with the voice of a panda. Convinced that they had a winning combination, Sushiban launched a massive sales campaign, pouring the bulk of the company's advertising budget into television adverts. Unfortunately, children's interests shifted away from panda bears, pushing the company over the brink into bankruptcy. Oh well. You know, if you're marketing towards kids, trends change very quick. You gotta be on the ball, and Sushiban was not. Let us take a listen to the, the beautiful sound that the RoboZoo makes. There's the panda head. Is that what a panda sounds like? I mean, if you were to ask me what sound does a panda make, I wouldn't be able to tell you. As far, I mean, maybe it could, like, I wouldn't know. Somehow that toy did not catch on, though. Let's zoom out. And it looks like that the earliest mission that we have now is a second objective for Shumikami. So, when we come back to Siren 2, we're going to see what else old Shu and Tsukasa had to do when they revisited Shu's childhood home and had to escape from hooded men that were trying to kill him when we come back. <laughs> 